Pakistan's Interior Ministry has sought more time to file a reply on 24 Indian witnesses appearing in a Pakistani court in the Mumbai attack case. The anti-terrorism court in Pakistan had asked the Interior Ministry to file a reply by Thursday. The hearing in the 26-11 Mumbai attacks have now been postponed to 11th of July. The lead investigator of the 26-11 Mumbai attacks has been transferred to Balochistan. Mazhar Kakakhel was director of Federal Investigative Agency in Islamabad and under his lead investigative team had arrested a key 26-11 attack facilitator, Sufyan Zafar. The notification for the transfer was issued by the establishment division. A report by the Brussels-based think tank, the International Crisis Management Group, has said that people in the Gwadar city in Pakistan's Balochistan province are discontent with the China-Pakistan economic corridor and the associated increase in the military's presence in civilian life. The report comes ahead of Pakistan's July 25th elections. The accountability court hearing the high-profile corruption cases against former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and his family is expected to announce its verdict in the case today. However, Nawaz has requested to postpone the hearing till he is back in the country. Next week, Nawaz and Maryam have been in London since June 14th, tending to Nawaz's wife, Kulsum, who is under medical treatment there. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani paid a visit to a Gurudwara in Kabul on Thursday. He offered condolences to the Afghan Sikh community following the deadly suicide attack in Jalalabad city that killed 13 Sikh Afghans, including Avtar Singh, the only Sikh candidate for Afghan parliament. Earlier, former President Hamid Karzai visited a Gurudwara. Afghan ambassador to India, Shahida Abdali, also visited a Gurudwara in Delhi this week. The trade war between United States and China is officially on with Trump's administration's tariffs on $34 billion of Chinese imports have gone into effect from today. While participating in a rally in Montana, Trump spoke on the issue saying that the U.S. is bringing back its wealth from foreign countries. Mexico's president-elect Andres Manuel López Obrador has said he would invite U.S. President Donald Trump to his inauguration. The leftist leader has signaled a potential shift in Mexican policy towards Venezuela. López Obrador, who won a landslide election victory on Sunday, said he would invite Trump along with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and other heads of state to his swearing-in, scheduled for December. explosions at fireworks workshops outside Mexico City killed at least 19 people including rescue workers and injured dozens more after a first blast in the municipality of Tultepec firefighters police and other rescue workers arrived at the scene when a second explosion occurred there has been a series of blasts at the fireworks markets in Tultepec about 32 kilometer north of Mexico City including a massive explosion in December 2016 that killed around three dozen people. Germany's Social Democrats party has reached an agreement on migration with the other parties in Chancellor Angela Merkel's coalition. The leader said there would be no transit centers of any kind. The parties agreed to speed up the process of returning asylum seekers that had already registered in other EU countries under existing EU rules. However, SPD leader said there would be no unilateral action by Germany. The son of fugitive Islamic State leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi has died, the jihadi group said in a statement. Hudayfa al-Badri, who is believed to have been about 18 years old, was killed during an attack on a thermal power station in Syria. The statement showed an image of a young boy carrying an assault rifle and gave no further details. Baghdadi's whereabouts remain unknown, but the wording of Tuesday's statement seemed to imply he is still alive.
Days after the Saudi ban on women driving was lifted, a woman's car was set on fire near the holy city of Mecca. The victim said she had been previously harassed for driving. Two suspects have been arrested on suspicion of arson. On June 24th this year, Saudi women celebrated taking to the wheel for the very first time in decades. The ultra-conservative kingdom overturned the world's only ban on female drivers, but the reform seems to be very little to change the mindset amongst Saudi men. In a first for any Arab country, a woman has been elected as a mayor of a capital city. A woman from Tunisia's moderate Islamic party has been elected as mayor of the capital city of Tunisia. 54-year-old manager of a pharmaceutical company, Squad Abderrahim of the Enada party, won the post of mayor of Tunis in the second round of voting by the municipal council. The Thai cave rescue operation is making slow but steady progress. Rescuers continue to pump out water and drill through rocks to facilitate the extraction of the trapped football team. The boys are being given high energy meals and other essential supplies to keep them in good health. A new video has emerged which shows rescuers, medics and divers walking through the cave complex to reach the boys trapped inside and assist them before they are evacuated. Dozens of mainly Chinese passengers are missing after a boat capsized as high winds whipped up rough seas off the Thai tourist island of Phuket. The boat was carrying around 90 passengers when it keeled over after it was hit by massive waves, prompting a rescue operation that stretched into the night and left authorities scrambling to react. Some of the survivors of the boat were rescued and brought to land. Seventeen people died as summer temperatures soared to a record high in eastern Canada. They were mostly senior citizens with no access to air conditioning. Temperatures reached the mid-30s, causing heat warnings to be raised in the country. Montreal reached a high of 34 degrees Celsius on Wednesday and is expected to continue through Thursday. As the Theresa May government is working in an overdrive to secure a glitch-free Brexit deal for the United Kingdom, words of caution have already started flowing in. Britain's biggest car maker Jaguar Land Rover has warned that a hard Brexit would cost it $1.5 billion a year, which could force it to curtail its future operations in the country. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex met with young leaders from across the Commonwealth at a special reception in London's Marlborough House on Thursday. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle also met with young representatives from Australia, New Zealand, Fiji and Tonga ahead of their tour this autumn. Mayor of London, Sadi Khan, will allow protesters to fly a blimp over Parliament portraying Donald Trump as an orange, snarling baby during the US President's upcoming visit. Trump, who arrives in a week's time, will meet Queen Elizabeth and Prime Minister Theresa May. Some Brit Britons see Trump as crude, volatile and opposed to their values on a range of issues. Tour de France organizers presented the teams and riders for the 2018 race on Thursday ahead of the competition start on Saturday. A doping investigation was dropped against reigning champion Chris Froome from Team Sky this week by Cycling World's governing body UCI. The scandal was hanging over his participation in the annual event. The reigning holder of all the three Grand Tours has tested positive for an asthma drug, Salbutamol. An endangered gorilla at the Dallas Zoo in Texas has made its public debut. The zoo's 22-year-old Western Lowland gorilla named Hope quietly delivered the infant. Western Lowland gorillas are considered to be critically endangered. This is Hope's second baby and the first born at the Dallas Zoo in 20 years.
Spain's Pamplona City Hall has launched an app designed to prevent sexual assaults. The quick and simple app with a localization tool to report assaults to the police is the latest initiative by the Pamplona authorities. The authorities have been cracking down on sexual abuse at the annual Bulls Festival, which reports most number of such cases. Dozens of people wearing stilettos, wedges and colourful customs took part in Madrid's annual high heel race during the 2018 Gay Pride festivities. Using rolls of sticky tape, the race participants secured their shoes to their feet before running down in Madrid's gay neighbourhood of Chueca. The competition is one of the top events in Madrid's Gay Pride celebrations, which takes place from June 28th to July 8th. Wildlife has returned to a reserve of China, Sichuan province, seven years after a deadly earthquake hit the region. A wild panda as well as other animals were spotted in the park. The activities of other protected animals like blood pheasant and hog-nosed badger were also recorded by the cameras. The nature reserve is located 45 kilometers southeast of Jizuagu, covering an area of more than 37,000 hectares. Floods and an alarming rise in water levels affected parts of central and southwestern China. Disaster and relief agencies have evacuated residents from risk areas in East China, Zhejiang province. Rainstorms triggered floods and landslides that damaged local houses and crops. In Wenling city, a flash flood caused a landslide in the mountains of Songmen town, dev devastating roads and facilities in the nearby scenic area. Heavy rainfall has flooded parts of Pakistan. At least 14 people were killed and 19 injured as torrential rains wreaked havoc in Pakistan's Punjab and northwest Khyber Pukhtunkhwa provinces. The official report revealed that most of the casualties happened due to roof collapse incidents and electrocution. Over to news from India, torrential rains have hit many parts of India including the states of Assam, Gujarat, Maharashtra and Uttar Pradesh. Trains and road traffic in some areas have been disrupted by the downpour but the rain was well received by farmers. A constable in the Jammu and Kashmir police has been announced to be dead. He was earlier abducted by terrorists, Javed Ahmad Dar hails from Shopia district in South Kashmir. Initial reports say four terrorists who came in a car abducted him from a local shop and the recent news that has poured in has announced that he is dead. Jammu and Kashmir police is yet to react on this story. There are reports that the terrorists have released a picture of Javed being tortured. Several students at the Central University of Kashmir refused to stand up for India's national anthem. These are the same students whose education is being funded by the government of India. However, the university has denied the entire incident in a detailed statement released by the university. They claim that the video circulated on social media is fake. In a setback for fugitive Indian tycoon Vijay Malia, a UK High Court has issued an enforcement order in favour of a consortium of 13 Indian banks seeking to recover funds owed to them by Absconda Malia. The former tycoon is fighting extradition to India and fraud and money laundering charges worth nearly 9,000 crore rupees. The order has granted permission to the UK High Court to enter Malia's properties near London. The Sri Lankan Navy arrested 12 Indian fishermen for allegedly poaching in its territorial waters on Thursday. This is a frequent problem for fishermen from the Indian state of Tamil Nadu. However, the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea states that fishermen who cross territorial waters can be warned and fined but not arrested. Air India has joined several foreign air carriers in agreeing to China's demand to no longer refer to Taiwan as a separate region on their websites. 
Air India's website, which as of last month referred to Taiwan as Taiwan, now refers to it as Chinese Taipei. Several air carriers, including Singapore Airlines, Japan Airlines and Air Canada, have changed description of Taiwan on their websites. Tata's nano car, which was espoused to be an affordable entry-level car for the Indian middle class, has seen only one unit manufactured last month. Domestic sales stand at a meager three units for the same month. The figures have seen a steady decline considering over 160 units were sold in the same month last year. Tata Motors also informed that there was no export of nano in the month of June. Sixty-six injured Yemeni soldiers have arrived in India's capital, New Delhi. The Indian government agreed to provide humanitarian and post-traumatic medical support to the soldiers wounded in their country's mounting violence. Three Russia fans clad in traditional female headgear shown on national TV snacking on hot dogs in the stands during Russia vs Spain match have emerged as unlikely stars in the country. The spectacle of the unmistakably Russian trio who were picked out by television cameras eating serenely as the country's nerves frayed during the match against Spain propelled them to national fame. The fans, two men and a woman, have become a viral internet sensation in Russia. Brazilian supporters turned a square in Kazan into a mini carnival as they welcomed their country's arrival for the quarterfinal against Belgium on Friday. At least 200 supporters formed a wave of yellow and green jerseys to greet Neymar, William Thiago Silva and their teammates as they arrived. Moscow State Zoo has named a newborn eagle after Igor Akinfeev, Russia's star goalkeeper who helped the team beat Spain in quarterfinals last weekend. Hatched on May 20th, zoo personnel could not decide on a name for the eaglet and resorted to naming it after the national football hero. Russia now plays Croatia in the quarterfinal on Saturday in Sochi. A footballing parrot named Newton, on Fre Newton predicted a French victory against Uruguay in their World Cup quarterfinal, becoming the latest in a long line of psychic animals. Newton has been trained to knock around a ball on a small cardboard soccer pitch and the team whose goal he scores in is taken to be the winner. So far in the tournament, Newton correctly predicted Sweden's victory over Switzerland. Dolphins in the Russian city of Yaroslavl predicted that Russia would win the World Cup quarterfinal against Croatia 3-1 and move into the last four of the tournament. Two dolphins were round round discs depicting the flags of the two countries in their pool and both came back with flag of the host country. The dolphins are part of a growing menagerie of animals predicting World Cup games. To get around language barriers in Russia, World Cup fans from around the globe have been actively using the Google Translate applications on their mobile phones. It has saved them the trouble of rummaging through phrase books or gesticulating to ask for directions or get their point across. The software has proven indispensable for many fans to communicate with locals in bars, restaurants and hotels in the 11 host cities. Now for a look at the big stories in the world of sport. The quarterfinal stage of the 2018 FIFA World Cup kicks off with two mouth-watering ties tonight. The first of the last eight clashes pits together two former world champions as France, fresh off their elimination of Argentina, meet Uruguay, who knocked European champions Portugal out in the round of 16.
The later kickoff from Kazan is a bigger blockbuster as the two highest ranked sides remaining in the competition, Brazil and Belgium, face off for a spot in the semis. Five time champions Brazil have been solid and short in reaching the last eight. Dark Horses Belgium, meanwhile, had to overturn a 2 0 deficit in a dramatic round of 16 win against Japan. Hollywood actor Amber Heard has been slammed for posting a racist tweet advising people to give their housekeepers and nannies a ride home because of an immigration checkpoint near her house. Heard was criticizing the US government's crackdown on illegal migrants. She later deleted the tweet following a public backlash.